Today we're not sponsored by Polar Seltzer Jr., but they are enjoyable. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Nomadic King channel. I'm James Showers, cleanest name in the biz, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at how you can start your subcontracting crew. Now in this video, we're not gonna go over specific dollar amounts, because I don't know what state, county, country you're living in, but we are gonna talk about a few things. Startup costs, your weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly maintenance costs, and we're going to wrap this up with a little story at the end. A nomadic story, if you would, about how I started my own crew, or to put it in better words, how I went from an apprentice to leaving my journeyman to starting my own drywall subcontracting crew. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Sit back, grab your acorns, and let's enjoy the show. Welcome to the Lockdown Corner. We're going to jump right into what you're going to need to start your crew. So first off, you're going to have to get a DBA. Now a DBA stands for doing business as, and that's basically the name of your company. Now you can be an LLC or a sole proprietor. Normally I'd choose the sole proprietor and just become a subcontractor under those terms. Now once you've filled out your DBA, paid the proper fee, sent that to the state, the state's going to certify whether or not that name is available for you to have. Once you get that name, you can go to your insurance company, make sure you get insurance for the trade that you're doing. So like if you're doing drywall hanging or taping or carpentry, each one's going to have a different insurance code and it's all going to change by the state that you're in. But once you get the insurance set up for the business that you're going to be doing, now you can either get your workman's comp. Now, sometimes you're only going to need a like ghost policy that's basically saying you have comp available if you need it. But in other cases, you're going to have to come up with an idea of how many employees you're going to have, how much time that's going to be, and then you'll figure out what kind of comp you're going to have to pay depending on a few different factors. So once you have your comp and your insurance and your DBA all set up, now you can normally register with the county that you're gonna be in and let them know that you're gonna be subcontracting and then actually get your license for that county. Now, depending on the state, the county, the city, some of that's gonna be different, but for the most part, it's gonna be along the lines of get your name, get your insurance, get your comp. Now, in some cases, you might even need to be bonded but the insurance and the comp and your name should get you what you're gonna need to get so you can have a license. Now you're legal, right? So now we're set up, we're legal. You're gonna need one other thing. Gonna need some tools. Now in the case of tools, you can either do a used tools or you can do new tools. Now, I only suggest the new tools to people that are actually like really into the trade, know what you're doing, you know what you're trying to get into here, and you and this is something you're gonna be doing for years to come. If you're just trying to get something happening here and you're not too sure if uh, you're gonna subcontract for a long time or if you're gonna to wanna to just try it out and then go work for somebody else, just get some used tools. Just get a few different things set up just to get functioning. And once the ball's rolling and it's something you wanna do, start adding some of the new pieces of uh, tools because that definitely becomes a price. Now, a hidden cost in this whole startup is actually your time. And that's the most expensive part, basically. You're gonna have to fill out the paperwork, you're gonna have to find the insurance company that's gonna deal with you, you're gonna have to find guys that, gonna, that are gonna work for you and do a good job, and you're gonna probably have to train some of these people. That's a lot of time you're gonna have to put into just starting up. Now, a recap. DBA, license, insurance, comp, bonded, time, tools. That's basically your startup in no particular order. In some cases, you could just get your tools maybe and find some people to work for under the table, but I'm not gonna advocate that in this video. <laughs> Next, we're gonna move on to your daily, your weekly, your monthly, and your quarterly expenses. Now these daily and weekly expenses are gonna basically be your consumables, your router bins, your screw tips, gloves, maybe even tape measures, screw guns, 
little things like that that are going to wear, tear, break throughout the week, maybe even in the day. You're going to need to replace these as you go along because that's what's going to actually make your crew functioning and fast and uh, reliable. Now that we're done with the daily and the weekly, we're going to move on to your monthly and quarterly. Now the monthly and quarterly are basically the same. It's going to be your insurance, your workman's comp, and your tax withholding, depending on how you have that set up. Either the every single month you'll go ahead and pay those and put some money to the side for your tax withdrawal, or you're going to do that every three months, which is quarterly. Pay up your insurance, get your uh, workman's comp, and take care of a little bit of money to the side for insurance. So lastly, on this little list, we're gonna throw a bonus in there. That's gonna be yearly. And that's when you're gonna write off all these fees. Your startup fees, your uh, tool fees, driving around in the truck fee, your gas, any of that kind of stuff is gonna be written off at the end of the year. And that's gonna kind of offset a lot of this and uh, kind of make it worth being a business in the first place. So if you've covered yourself throughout the quarterly months through the year, you'll have the money sitting to the side for anything you might have to pay at the end of the year in your taxes. But if you get a good tax person, you might be just fine without uh, paying out that money and then you get a nice nest day to move on to the next year. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. It's basically the legal uh, jargon, the tools, and a little bit of costs on what it's going to take for you to run the crew daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Alright guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. We're going to do a little story at the end here, a little nomadic story. If you're into that, let me know down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. Hey, we're out in the truck. That is where a true nomadic story can be told. This video is probably way too long as it is, so we're going to go ahead and jump right to it. We're in the past. I'm 20 years old, 21 maybe. I'm working for a guy named Gary Michael. I'm an apprentice. I can cut, I can router, I can screw with the best of them. Now, I'm basically an employee for Gary Michael, who is a subcontractor for another subcontractor. Subcontracting for a contractor, right? There's many subcontractors subcontracting for this subcontractor, if that makes any sense to you. Well, another one of these subcontractors is a guy by the name of Rick Rover, and one of his apprentices is Dustin. And there was a time where there's a house that needed to be hung on a weekend, and neither Gary Michael or Rick Rover wanted to do the house. So, that subcontractor that our subcontractors are subcontracting to called them up and said, hey, would your apprentices do this house? I just really want it done to make a show for this builder. And uh, myself and Dustin contacted each other through our journeyman, and we did this house. We hung this house over uh, a weekend. I think we took us uh, the, the full week, and we finished it up on Monday, so maybe a total of three days, just me and him. We had a pretty good time, had a really good flow, and we decided that we wanted to go ahead and just team up. We took the money from that house and we traded it for tools. That was benches, that was maybe screw guns, routers, whatever else we needed to, to get going. Now the subcontractor that our bosses, our journeymen, were subcontracting to allowed us to get our legal stuff in, uh, in a line, in a row, over the course of that month so that we could subcontract for him. So Dustin and myself teamed up for a little bit. Eventually, we kind of went our own ways and we both started our own crews. And I subcontracted as Blue Roots Drywall for quite a while until the band that I was in decided we were gonna be rock stars and we moved to California. This was pre-Facebook, this was pre-MySpace era type. Get your stuff, go gig in, play some shows and be a rock star kind of band ambition. Well, that's a story for another day. We're done telling how I started my very first crew. If you guys want more nomadic story time, let me know in the comments down below. We can touch base on band story. We can touch base on 
drywall crew stories. That's it for me. We're wrapping this video up. You guys know how YouTube works. Like, share, subscribe, comment, whatever you guys want to do. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.